My name is Brandon Rucci and in this video I'll be turning this pile of wood here into some garage doors. Stick around. So the wood that I'm making these garage doors out of is clear vertical grain Douglas fir. If you guys can see this is a very nice wood, very tight grain. And the idea, or yeah, I guess the idea, what, what's currently happening is I've already planed these down. Uh, they started around an inch thick. They were kind of just all over the place. I've worked on planing them down a week ago and now I'm finally getting back to planing it some more. You guys will see my planing setup. It's not ideal, but it does the job. Um, but the idea here is I'm bringing them down to a little over three quarter and for my styles and rails I'll be doubling them up to get me inch and a half thick. Gluing them up you guys will get to see that and uh, then I'll have some panels on the inside those will be three quarter inches thick but uh, yeah gonna get right into uh, planing down the boards. Another thing I'm looking for in these boards is just kind of how wide the grain is. You guys can see a lot of these boards are very nice and tight grain. Uh, however, I bought this in the rough, so I actually couldn't see what the grain was looking like. And there are a few boards that you get grain, you know, that's a little wider. There's one here. Let me pull this one. Back. Here's another board here. I mean, there's no way that we could put this board in with those panels. This here will get glued up most likely behind one of the styles and rails whatever it might be just so it's not noticeable but um that's just kind of what you get when you buy in the rough and honestly we might not even need it depending on how much lumber we use if it just gets set aside and used for another project it is what it is i finished planing down all my boards i got them to like 13 16 and the idea right now is i'm straight line ripping these boards i have my festival track saw here the nine footer and the four footer combined up to rip these 12s i don't have a straight line rip saw I'm not going to use the joiner um, these are just too big and sometimes in the middle here. I'm like out three eighths of an inch So this is just what's gonna work best for me And uh, what I got here is just testing it out make sure the saw is sitting square uh, on the material flat and um, When these guys are clamped up that everything looks real nice now One thing I'm checking too while I'm doing this is just if there is a little you know where the seam is if there is a little gap that I'm not applying too much pressure to the clamp, you know, just a very light turn because I don't want to, uh, you know, be adding too much clamping pressure because then by the time you let the clamp loose, then they're just fighting against each other. So that's one thing I'm considering and uh, just gonna keep moving along. My buddy Tim told me about this idea to drill some one inch holes into my three quarter inch strap plywood and then rip them in half. Now what I'm doing here is screwing them to my LSLs. I had these LSLs laying around and uh, they're just perfectly flat so that's why I use those for uh, a lot of this project. You guys will see more of them in the future while I'm doing the laminations. But the reason I drilled those holes is to hold the pipe clamps. For those of you guys that have ever done glue ups, you know those pipes just like to roll all over the place. So that uh, plywood holds it all in place. Now what I'm doing here for all my glue ups is just putting a bunch of glue on one edge and then sliding them back and forth back and forth just to uh, spread that glue all over so got these clamped up for around like three or four hours um, a piece and then I came back with the scraper and removed all or most of the glue um, just so it's not you know going through the wide belt taking all that off so that's it in the process is to laminate these uh, boards get them inch and a half thick and what I'm doing here is throwing some scrap plywood into the LSL to uh, just protect it from any of the glue that squeezes out on them they're perfectly flat so I want to keep them that way this board here is just going to help me keep everything in line so nothing tips over as I'm gluing them up then I picked out a bunch of boards figured out which ones go to the front of the door and which ones go which ones go in the back and then here I am just throwing some type on three into a little paint roller tray with a roller I believe that was a half inch nap something like that and uh, rolled that all on nice and thick and essentially flipped it over onto each side to give me a little sandwich of wood and then I threw some clamps on there six hours later tried to go over that uh, I unclamped them and did the next set this took many hours I have my panels here glued up now I'm gonna run these through the wide belt bring them down to three quarters of an inch so everything's flat 
However, these are only 22 inches wide, just roughly. Uh, what I have to do is make these actually five feet wide total. So the plan is I have four of these. Um, I'm gonna double them up, but first I'm just gonna run them through the sander since I can only run uh, three feet. But even then, I'm gonna have to add like three more boards. So just gotta keep that in mind while I'm running these. I have all the laminations done. Um, they're sitting off to my right here. Uh, I believe I glued up over like 40 something boards. So got to run those through too as well. We're going to bring those down to inch and a half. They're just maybe inch and five eighths right now. So I got a 30 grip belt in the Y belt here. So that's what's going to take off majority of this. That'll be my first few passes. And then I'll maybe take it up to 80 and then to 120. And then from there, it's all hand sanding when it's time. But um, that's where we're at. So I just ran into a problem here. I was running a board through one of my last boards here and I smelled something a little funny. I thought, you know, it smelled like a burning smell. So the first thing I did, I let this one run through and then I checked my 50 gallon drum or 30 gallon, whatever the hell that is over there. Um, check if any smoke was coming out of there because, you know, fires can start very easily with uh, the dust collector. However, um, found out that this motor here, this, I just touched it, it was insanely hot. Um, so I got my electrician coming out here to help figure out exactly what it is. This here's a 15 horse motor. I hope it's still good. I don't really know what it, what could be wrong with it, but um, it's where I'm at. I'm at a standstill right now. I just had to sand down these panels just a little bit more. I'm still running them with 30 grit. I gotta get them to 80 and then 120. But I do have them for the most part flattened out. So keep you guys posted. About 20 minutes later, I had Wade, the electrician, and Justin, the maintenance man, come over here and just kind of diagnose what was happening. And we found out that the motor was running at 240 degrees, which uh, was a little hot. I mean, we could tell by touching it, but yeah. So, anyways, the problem, what we came up with uh, after talking with Scott. Scott is the man who repaired this motor, I'll show you that in just a second, was uh, that I cheaped out on a phase converter and that led to the downfall of this, letting the brake uh, not, not disengage while it was running. So uh, that happened, but took it over to Scott the next day uh, down in Chicago and uh, he kind of walked me through exactly how these motors operate and uh, Scott's just a wizard when it comes to these electronic motors. In under three business days he had this motor completely rebuilt, part shipped from Italy and uh, yeah, so major shout out to Scott for getting me back up and running so quick. You guys can see how that uh, motor turned out right there. Looks freaking sweet and uh, we're all back up and running after, you know, a few thousand dollars. I had to get a new phase converter, this new motor fixed. And uh, once wide belt was back up and running, I finished sanding these boards. I only brought it up to 80 grit. I did the rest of the uh, sanding by hand up to 120. And uh, here I am cutting my boards to length for each of the panels. Now the goal here was to grain match all these and that's exactly what I did. Here I am testing the fitment, uh, then dominoing each and every one of these boards to get them, connect, get them to connect together. I had to make them five feet long, as I said before, and um, just wanted to make sure all my glue lines were looking nice. And I didn't want to run these against the grain. I just, I don't like running this uh, wood against the grain. It just causes for more sanding down the road. And so here I am doing that. Had a bunch of that to do. Once the panels were all sanded up, I applied some stain to them. Now this stain is provided to me by the customer. I forget the name of it. Anyways, called up Tim the next day and we started ripping down some of our styles and rails and uh, ran those through the shaper. Now Tim got the shaper all set up. He's kind of the mastermind behind this whole deal. We ended up doing two passes on them uh, just because we were getting a lot of tear out trying to do one. Now uh, we just did two. Took a little bit more time, but no tear out, so it worked out. Cutting them on the cross cut sled and coping them out, and making progress. Once all my copes were complete, I went ahead and got the domino machine out. Now here I am using the largest domino that I can with the machine I have. I don't have the uh, bigger size version I wish I did for this project, but I feel like this is also overkill. I just wanted to do it anyways for added strength. Um, once I completed that, I went ahead and ran uh, my styles for the top piece. These will go for the windows. So that'll be up on the top and center style here. 
Once I was all complete and my stain for the panels was dry, I went ahead and cut these guys to length. I'm not sure if I mentioned this before, but uh, as I was cutting these panels, I was insanely nervous because if you think about it, I had all these panels uh, grain matched. Now, if I were to mess up one of these, just the amount of time that went into each and every panel, sanding, gluing, everything, and the fact that I want them grain matched, if one of them were to be cut wrong, it would screw my whole vision up. Anyways, everything went well. Put some space balls in there, test fit all of my panels, and then once that was complete, I uh, finished staining off the edges. Wanted to make sure I could seal everything that I could. The rest of the uh, project got sent off to a stain guy. They messed with that. I don't have any final pictures yet, but um, got some panels glued up, and then while some were gluing up, Tim and myself were cutting uh, some angle pieces. Now this here is just like, I believe like a half inch board. It goes on for another added detail. Then while we're doing that, we also were clamping up some other boards. So this here is the top panel for the garage door. And then once that was complete, tipped down a bunch of doors, well, a full set of doors. And we ended up making a template for these angle pieces you guys are about to see. So before I even did that, we went ahead and sanded them down. This was quite a few hours in sanding alone, I believe. All my uh, styles and rails were at 80, so I hit them with the uh, bigger sander, and then I brought it back down to 120 with this little guy. And uh, those things were just smooth as a baby fuck. You know, everything was perfect. And then here we are cutting these angled pieces for the added, added detail. And Tim came up with this little jig for the router. Now he's doing all the copes um, just to get these guys to fit properly. And that there, I, I don't think I would have came up with that idea myself, but it's the best way to do it. Here I am with a template too. We had some three quarter scrap plywood. We put across the doors. Now that just gave us our exact measurements. We weren't dealing with physical measurements. We just figured it out roughly with a piece of uh, plywood and traced it out onto our boards and uh, got those screwed on. They do float with the panels. And then here we are running a door uh, through the shaper, cutting out a little dado because on each of the bottom panels, there is a little tongue which we're cutting out right here that will basically interlock uh, top panel with each bottom panel so we're all good to go there and that's a wrap on the doors if you guys found this video interesting anything i'm sorry my my commentary is probably not the best as this was many months ago that this actually happened so i wasn't fully up to speed on how everything worked out but um also you guys can see me here i am weighing out the doors because i did not hang these doors and uh just wanted to help out you know someone else when i can so got the weight of the doors i believe each door was weighing around 60 pounds so that's it for this video. I appreciate you guys if you stuck around till the end. Uh, this video, as I said before, has been taking me many months to put out there. It's finally coming along now, so if you guys enjoyed it, drop a like. Thanks for watching.